Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Dyslexic Reader. Today I just wanted to give you a bit of an update because I haven't really been about this channel or the internet in general recently and that is going to continue for the foreseeable future and I just wanted to update you with what's going on with me and also my reading and what I'm reading and what I'm doing with myself. So I've been having a lot of like health issues recently they're not going away. Um, it's going to be like this for a while. I've hardly left the house in months. Um, I'm just I'm in a lot of pain. Um, but today I feel a little bit better so I thought I would get on video and kind of like explain to you guys. That's why I haven't been about this started at the start of July and has been ongoing since. So um, that's why this summer I kind of haven't been in about. And I know I don't have to explain to anybody but I know that some of you have definitely noticed that my videos aren't as regular as they used to be and that's why I basically can only film when I feel up to it which recently has been never so I'm gonna try and make this short and sweet but I wanted to update you guys on my reading. So the last book I finished and this is the I have read another the 11th and 12th book in the series of unfortunate events series this month because I'm kind of like rereading at those. I read the 10th last month for a reading challenge and then I've done 11 and 12 this month just because I'm continuing on with the story and um, but they're not long or difficult and apart from that this is the only book that I read so far in September Underwater Breathing by Cassandra Parkin. Um, I just finished this last night and it was actually really good. Um, It's about a family with a mother, father, um, a teenage son and a very young daughter and um, they move to this house on a cliff that is eroding and their house is eventually going to fall into the sea um, and they appear to have moved there because there's, there's something going on that means they don't want to be found and then this is not a spoiler happens in the first chapter the mother leaves and takes the little girl with her and the mother and the little girl leave without a note, without no trace or anything and um, then it's just the teenage son and the father and it's sort of the book flips back and forth between current day and about 10 years ago when they disappeared um, and it's kind of like what has happened since then and why they disappeared and all that kind of stuff and I was saying to my boyfriend that there's kind of a mystery in this and then at the end it's a wee bit disappointing but it is not a, it's not a mystery book it's it's about the family it's really an in-depth look at like human nature it's very nicely written so like the mystery of like what's been going on doesn't play like a big part at the end do you know what I mean it's not really completely solved but it's not a, it's not a mystery book I didn't pick it up thinking that was a mystery book so it wasn't necessarily an unsatisfactory ending um, but yeah I would definitely recommend this. There is a weird, kind of weird, we don't know if it's weird or not sexual relationship in this so just um, I to be aware of that but it is a beautiful cover and this was one that I picked up on a whim. It was three for five pound deal in the works and I had two so I needed a third one um, and I'm really glad that I bought this because I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And then as I said today I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, my boyfriend took me to the library just to get me out of the house for a little while. And I'm going to show you the books that I got because this is probably um, the kind of next things that I'll be um, reading. So we got four books. One's mostly for him but if he thinks he's going to read it and then if he thinks I like it I'll read it too. And that is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. We were just looking through the shelves and I saw this and I was like what? Like that's right. I've heard of that before. It's really highly recommended. It's won a lot of prizes but I don't think it's my kind of book. And he was like, we'll get it and I'll read it. He likes um, literary fiction. And actually the library has stuck this sticker over the synopsis. So I can't even really tell what it's about. But I know it's literary fiction. Um, and it's about a married couple, I believe, in kind of a mundane life. Um, you can't really tell on the camera, but all this red, like it's like leaf veins. It's all like foiled and it is really beautiful. But he's going to read this and then he'll tell me. It's not very long. It is just over 170 pages so he's going to read this and then if he thinks I like it I might give it a go if I feel in the mood. And then I got an adult novel and two middle grade novels. 
The first one is Mockingbird by Catherine Arkenstein. Um, the cover of this drew me. It was the, my library has got a lot of new books in since I was last there. Um, this is one of them so it caught my eye because I knew I hadn't seen it there before. And the first sentence is what, when I picked it up and looked at the blurb, it was the first sentence that got me. Caitlin misses her brother every day since his death in the school shooting and I think that's an interesting topic, especially to put in a school book, or like a school child's age book, it's a middle grade book. Not that it's a big issue or a massive worry in the UK, but as a teacher and stuff it's interesting to me. Um, and it goes on to explain about it a little bit, but our main character, whose brother died in a school shooting, is autistic. And one day she sees a definition for closure and decides that's what she needs. So she begins a journey to try and find it. She finds the world very confusing. Um, so I think that'll probably be my next read. I might pick that up later. Then my second pick, this is another middle grade. And again, this is new to my library. And I saw it and it just looked kind of spooky and Halloween-y. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll pick that up. That's always good to have around this time of the year. And then I noticed on the front, um, it is by Ross McKenzie, who also wrote The Nowhere Emporium, which I read last year and really enjoyed. Really liked the writing style more than anything else. So definitely as an author, he is someone I would pick up again. And this is the Shadowsmith. I don't believe it's a series. Are you brave? You'll never know until you need to know. And Kirby Sevens is about to find out. Kirby is being watched by a spider. Creepy. Weirder still, a strange girl with extraordinary powers bangs on his window in the middle of the night. Stuff like this doesn't happen to him. How frightened should he be? From the masterful storyteller Ross McKenzie from the award-winning The Nowhere Emporium comes a newly, new darkly magical world. So there it is and the cover you can't really tell but it's almost like um, layered and foiled and it's really beautiful. So probably, oh part one the storm and the spiders. So probably it will be either of these will be my first pickup but my last book that I got the library is something I'm really excited about. I remember Sue, it's Sue's book. Nick, is that your channel name? Sue? Oh, I'm so sorry I'm drawing a blank. But I remember Sue reading this quite a while ago, maybe at the start of the year, and I had heard of it prior to that, and I had um, thought, that's interesting. And then when Sue reviewed it, I was like, yeah, that sounds like something I would definitely enjoy. And then when I was in the library today, I didn't see this particular book, but I saw another book by the same author. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's the girl that wrote this book. Um, so I went searching to see if they would have this since they had her other works and they did um, and this is The Miniature Miniaturist by Jesse Burton and the cover is absolutely beautiful. The end pages, oh there she is, hi Jesse, how you doing? The end pages are go gorgeous and um, uh, the synopsis is long so I'll not read you it but it's set in the 1600s in Amsterdam. This young farm girl moves to the city to marry this rich merchant um, and when she arrives you know she's the family's weird and whatever else and as a wedding gift he gives her a basically a doll house of their house and this fin famous miniaturist which is a word that I don't think I'll ever be able to say so the review of this will be a nightmare um you know, kits out the house so it looks exactly like it. And then odd stuff starts going on there. I'm not sure whether stuff happens in the doll's house and then happens in real life, or if something happens in real life, it, the doll house reflects it. I'm not sure which kind of way I'm around it works. But I'll say is, um, the tiny creations mirror their real life counterparts in unexpected ways. Um, it's just a beautiful book. It's not too long. I think it's about 400 and something pages but it's long enough that you could really get sink your teeth in and get invested into. And I feel like this will be like a nice cozy autumnal read. So those will probably be my next three reads, but I'll probably not get them all done by the end of the month because um, I haven't really been able to read recently. So that's it. That's all I wanted to talk to you guys about and just give you a little update. I'm going to try and post as much as I can because I miss it. Mm. But if I'm not up to it, I'm not up to it. So there's nothing really I can do about that. But I want to let you all know that I haven't gone anywhere. 
I'm still here. I'm still on Twitter and Goodreads and Instagram. I'm more active on there because obviously I don't have to get up, get out of bed and stuff to do those things. Um, so I'm still more active on there if you want to follow them. They're all linked down below. I hope you're all happy. I hope you're all healthy and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.